Hello, this is Donna Lewis with the Clark County Park District, and today I'm going to read another chapter of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Again, a crazy story written a long time ago by a little girl, and then written into an actual book by a reverend, Lewis Carroll. So, today we're going to read The Queen's Croquet Ground. Queen is cr a crazy lady, let me tell you. So here we go. A large rose stood near the entrance of the garden. The roses growing on it were white, but there were three gardeners busily painting them red. Alice thought this was a very curious thing. She heard one of them say, look now five, don't go splashing paint over me like that. I couldn't help it too, said five in a sulky tone. Seven jogged my elbow. Seven looked up and said, that's right five, always lay the blame on others. You'd better not talk, said Five. I heard the queen say only yesterday you deserve to be beheaded. Uh, pardon me, said Alice a little timidly. Why are you painting these roses? Two began in a low voice. Why, this here ought to have been a red rose tree and we put a white one in by mistake. If the queen was to find out. At this moment, Five called out, the queen, the queen, and the three gardeners instantly threw themselves flat upon their faces. Alice looked around, eager to see the queen. First came soldiers carrying clubs. These were all shaped like the three gardeners, oblong and flat, with their hands and feet at the corners. The courtiers, oh, next came the courtiers. These were ornamented all over with diamonds and walked two by two as the soldiers did. After these came the royal children, jumping merrily along. They were all ornamented with hearts. Next came the guests mostly kings and queens, and among them, Alice rec recognized the white rabbit. It was talking in a hurried, nervous manner. Then followed the knave of hearts, carrying the king's crown on a crimson velvet cushion. And last of all, this grand, and last of all, this grand procession came the king and queen of hearts. When the procession came opposite to Alice, they all stopped and looked at her, and the queen said severely, Who is this? What is your name, child? My name is Alice, your majesty, said Alice very politely, but she added to herself, why, they're only a pack of cards. I needn't be afraid of them. And who are these? Said the queen, pointing to the three gardeners who were lying on their faces. Get up. What have you been doing here? Your majesty, said two, going down on one knee as he spoke. We were trying... I see, said the queen, who had immediate, who had meanwhile been examining the roses. Off with their heads, said the, and the procession moved on. Can you play croquet, shouted the queen. Yes, shouted Alice. Come on then, roared the queen, and Alice joined the procession, wondering very much what would happen next. It's, it's a very fine day, said a timid voice at her side. She was walking by the white rabbit, who was peeping anxiously into her face. Very, said Alice. Where's the Duchess? Hush, hush, said the rabbit in a low, hurried tone. He looked anxiously over his shoulder as he spoke and then raised himself upon tiptoe, put his mouth close to her ear and whispered, she's under a sentence of execution. What for? She boxed the queen's ears, the rabbit began, and Alice laughed. So here's the procession that Alice saw. It looks like some kind of crazy card game got the king and the queen of hearts. And, oh, the white rabbit. And her soldiers look like playing cards. So you may have seen that in other pictures before of Alice in Wonderland. And then here's the rabbit whispering to Alice about the duchess. And it looks like here they're playing their game of croquet. So that's what's next, their croquet game. Oh, hush, the rabbit whispered in a frightened tone. The queen will hear you. You see, she came rather late and the queen said, get to your places, shouted the queen in a voice of thunder. And people began running around in all directions, tumbling up against each other. They settled down in a minute and the game began. Alice had never seen such a curious croquet, croquet ground in all her life. The balls were live hedgehogs, the malice live flamingos, and the soldiers had to double themselves up 
and stand upon their hands and feet to make the arches. Alice succeeded in getting her flamingo's body tucked under her arm with its legs hanging down, but just as she had gotten its neck straightened out and was going to give the, le the hedgehog a blow with its head, it would twist itself around and look up in her face with such a puzzled expression that she could not help bursting out laughing. When she looked down, she found that the hedgehog had unrolled itself and was in the act of crawling away. I would too. Besides all this, the doubled up soldiers were always getting up and walking off to other parts of the ground. The players all played at once without waiting for turns. The queen went stopping around and shouting, off with his head, and or off with her head, about once in a minute. Alice had not yet had any dispute with the queen, but she knew that it might happen any minute. She was looking around for some way of escape when she noticed a curious appearance in the air. After watching it a minute or two, she could tell it was a grin. How are you getting on? said the Cheshire cat as soon as there was mouth enough for it to speak with. Once the whole head appeared, Alice put down her flamingo and began an account of the game, feeling very glad she had someone to listen to her. I don't think they play at all fairly, Alice complained, and they don't seem to have any rules. So here is the Cheshire cat, and it looks like the queen has found the Cheshire cat at this point, here in a minute. How strange, a head appearing in the air. Who are you talking to, said the king, coming up to Alice and looking at the cat's head with great curiosity. It's a friend of mine, a Cheshire cat, said Alice. Allow me to introduce it. I don't like the look of it at all, said the king. He called to the queen. My dear, I wish you would have this cat removed. The queen had only one way of settling all difficulties, great or small. Off with its head, she said without even looking around. I'll fetch the executioner myself, said the king eagerly, and he hurried off. Alice thought she might as well continue the game, so she went in search of her hedgehog, which was engaged in a fight with another hedgehog. Her flamingo had gone across to the other side of the garden, where Alice could see it trying to fly up into one of the trees. By the time she had caught the flamingo and brought it back, both hedgehogs were out of sight, so she tucked the flamingo under her arm and went back for a little more conversation with her friend. When she got back to the Cheshire Cat, she was surprised to find quite a large crowd, collected around it. There was a dispute going on between the executioner, the king, and the queen, who were all talking at once. The executioner's argument was that you couldn't cut, cut off a head unless there was a body to cut it off from. The king's argument was that anything that had a head could be beheaded and that you weren't to talk nonsense. The queen's argument was that if something wasn't done about it immediately, she'd have everybody executed. Alice could think of nothing to say except it belongs to the Duchess. You'd better ask her about it. Fetch her here, the queen said to the executioner. The executioner went off like an arrow. The cat's head began fading away the moment he was gone, and by the time he had come back with the Duchess, it had entirely disappeared. The king and the executioner ran up and down looking for it while the rest of the party went back to the game. You can't think how glad I am to see you again, you dear old thing, said the Duchess as she tucked her arm affectionately into Alice's and they walked off together. Alice was very glad to find her in such a pleasant temper and thought to herself that per perhaps it was only the pepper that had made her so savage when they met in the kitchen. So here's the crazy queen and her court looking up at the Cheshire cat, but they can't really do anything to the cat, right? Because he can disappear. And here is that crazy game of croquet again, now that we got to that part that Alice was playing. And if I was the hedgehog and the flamingo, I would run away too. When I'm a duchess, she said to herself, I won't have any pepper in my kitchen at all. Maybe it's always pepper that makes people hot-tempered and vinegar that makes them sour and sugar and such things that make children sweet-tempered. She had quite forgotten the duchess by this time and was a little startled when she heard her voice close to her ear. You're thinking about something, my dear, and that makes you forget to talk. I can't tell you just now what the moral of that is, but I shall remember it in a bit. Perhaps it hasn't one, Alice ventured to remark. Tut, tut, child, said the duchess. Everything's got a moral, if only you can find it. And she squeezed herself up closer to Alice's side as she spoke. Alice did not much like her keeping so close to her because she was exactly the right height to rest her chin on Alice's shoulder, and it was an uncomfortably sharp chin. However, she did not like to be rude, so she bore it as well as she could. The game's going on better now, she said. Tis so, 
said the Duchess. And the moral of that is, oh, tis love, tis love that makes the world go round. How fond she is of finding morals in things, Alice thought to herself. Thinking again, the Duchess asked with another dig of her sharp little chin. I've got a right to think, said Alice. Just about as much right, said the Duchess, as pigs have to fly. But here the Duchess's voice died away and the arm that was linked into hers began to tremble. So the people in this show, are, in this story, are pretty strange. So do you think it's just a dream that she's having? I would venture to say that. Alice looked up and there stood the queen in front of them with her arms folded, frowning like a thunderstorm. A fine day, your majesty, the duchess began in a low, weak voice. I give you fair warning, shouted the queen, stamping on the ground as she spoke. Either you or your head must come off. Take your choice. The duchess took her choice and she was gone in a moment. The queen said to Alice, have you seen the mock turtle yet? No, said Alice, I don't even know what a mock turtle is. It's the thing mock turtle soup is made from said the queen. Come on then, and he shall tell you his history. As they walked off together, Alice heard the king say in a low voice to the company, you are all pardoned. That's a good thing, she said to herself, for she had felt quite unhappy at the number of executions the queen had ordered. So supposedly the queen says everyone's in trouble, but then they're not. So that's good. Alice and the queen very soon came upon a griffin lying fast asleep in the sun. Up, lazy thing, said the queen, and take this young lady to see the mock turtle. I must go back and see after some executions I have ordered. And she walked off, leaving Alice alone with the griffin. It's all her fancy that. They never execute anybody, you know, said the griffin to Alice. Come on. So... The griffin said, nothing to worry about. She doesn't execute anyone. So there's the griffin. You guys may have seen a griffin in like Harry Potter. And she's going to take a ride on the griffin to see the mock turtle. So next week, or actually later this week, we're going to finish the story. This is called the mock turtle story. So we'll be finishing up this version of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And I do believe this is as pretty close to the original version. Um, and, and actually, it might be a little more difficult to understand than the original version, but this is probably pretty close to the original version. So usually you've seen versions of it like on Disney and things like that, so it's a little bit different. Um, and the most recent was really strange, right? But this is a pretty strange book. And supposedly, Alice is probably having a dream and dreams can get pretty crazy. So think about some of the weird ones that you've had, right? Um, nothing ever makes sense. So this is kind of like a really crazy dream that Alice is having. All right, guys, I hope you had a great holiday last week and um, stay safe this week. And I will see you later this week with the rest of Alice in Wonderland. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.